You're watching a global celebration of all things Notre Dame, where we invite you to watch, connect, give, and vote. This is Notre Dame Day, live from the LaFortune Student Center. Welcome back to Notre Dame Day. If you are just joining us for the first time, welcome to our number 23 of Notre Dame Day, a 29-hour global celebration of the University of Notre Dame. If you're back for our 23rd hour, thank you. We promise you this hour's broadcast will not disappoint. My name is Jack Nolan. If you're a fan of Notre Dame sports, you might know my work from my work for Fighting Irish Digital Media. I'm here at the LaFortune Student Center on the Notre Dame campus, just a few yards away from the university's main building and its iconic Golden Dome. This will be our broadcast headquarters for the next seven hours as we celebrate all things Notre Dame with alumni, students, parents, friends, and fans from all around the world. I'm joined here in the studio by my co-host for this hour, Notre Dame graduate, Trisha Hart. Trisha, welcome home. Thank you so much, Jack. In this hour, we will be celebrating Notre Dame parents, a huge part of the Notre Dame family. And we will explore in some detail the parents program, which provides opportunities for parents to be involved at Notre Dame. Whether you're a current parent, a lifetime parent, or even a prospective parent, at Notre Dame, students are our greatest treasure. And through this hour, we will hear from current students and past Notre Dame parents and their engagement in the life of this university. And we'll have two rival residence halls, O'Neill and Keough, who will engage in some friendly competition this hour on campus and online. And we will be going to the DeBartolo Performing Arts Center across campus to a live performance by the world famous Notre Dame Glee Club, a command performance for just all of you who are tuning in now to Notre Dame Day. But first, it's time to check in with one of our Notre Dame Day reporters, Catherine Dudas, who is on location right now. Catherine, tell us where you are. Thank you, Jack and Jisha. Yeah, I'm on location at the Eck Visitor Center, which for many prospective students and parents is one of the first places they visit on campus. Just a little some facts. Uh, it's right next to the bookstore. Uh, both the bookstore and the center uh, opened up in 1998 as a visitor's first stop on campus. The Eck Center has a 150-seat auditorium, and this is the first time I've been to the Eck Center, so it's a very special day for me. Uh, now let's send it back to Trisha in the studio. Thank you, Catherine. Welcome back to the Notre Dame studio. In just a moment, we will be joined by Notre Dame parent Todd Schurz. But first, take a look at this video. Our parent experience has been wonderful and it's a little, it will sound cliche to say it, but we do feel like we're part of the Notre Dame family. I think it's uh, having our daughter Liz here at Notre Dame has really strengthened our relationship with her as she's grown academically and spiritually and athletically. She's just been involved in so many things here at Notre Dame and, and helps us know her better and understand her better and brings us all closer. We enjoy that she's um, kind of uh, moved beyond just studying and you know, learned how to achieve a balance, which we thought was really important for her. Both of my children came here, they had an idea of what they wanted to study, um, but still it was very much a work in progress, and being at Notre Dame allowed them to explore different things, and we followed the advice of stand back parents and let go, let your child find their passion, and the cooperation that Mike has with his peers, he's the older one, but in um, labs and things like that, like he'll talk about the cooperative environment. It's just like everything that you know a parent would hope for for their child. So yes, yeah, so I'm proud. So I'm not the Notre, Notre Dame alum, but I feel like I am part of the family and, and just very proud of them. Notre Dame's a truly a, a special place where you, you grow not only as a student and academically, but as a, as a whole person. So a community that starts here, but it, it continues on both multi-generational um, and uh, in, many, in many cases, and uh, also the closest friends that, that I have were the, were the friendships that, uh, uh, that were established here. So it's been a great, uh, great and important part of our family. And uh, you know, although my father didn't go here, he loved the school as well and introduced it to me. And, and uh, it's, it's been really great uh, to be part of it. We've got one cool thing to show you. Uh, he's got his ID card from. Oh, yeah. We're not going to put that on. Yeah, let's, let's show it. Let's show it. This is good. This is good. Okay. You're sure you you want to we got to show up. Dangerous. This, 
Maybe the 70s were a rough time. There's uh, the father and son, you know. They make you feel like a family. Um, they care for you, they take care of you, they take care of your kids, and they want nothing but the best. And this school is nothing but the best. There's, what else can you ask for yeah, in a college? It's terrific. The academics are second to none, but the family feeling is what really struck us, that they really care about each individual student, and we've seen that so many times in so many places with professors that we met and, and the rectors and the dorms and just the whole Notre Dame experience. And, and, you know, there's that quote that it's not just a four-year decision, it's a 40-year decision. We see that. I like the focus at Notre Dame on educating the whole person, that you don't want to spend all your time devoted strictly to academic pursuits. That it's important to be a healthy, well-rounded individual, to take care of your emotional, your spiritual, your physical, and your academic life. And I think that that's something that's easy to lose sight of. That's one of the things I think that is common for parents as their children are leaving home and moving off to start their adult life as college students. Um, there's a lot of questioning that goes on at that time in a young person's life, which is healthy and normal. There is not any fear or anxiety about a young person coming here and questioning everything about their value system and what's meaningful in their life and what they want to do with it. Um, but it's done in a way that's very safe. There is an underlying understanding that the privilege you have of coming here carries with it an obligation to give back. That means a lot to me. We are now in our interview area where we are joined by Notre Dame parent Todd Shears. Todd, thanks for taking some time to visit with us today. Thanks, Jack, for having me. As a parent, when you found out that your daughter had been accepted to the University of Notre Dame, what was that like for you? Well, it was really exciting. I mean, for us, we're in the unique position that we live in South Bend. So we are literally 10 minutes away. And as you can imagine, being 10 minutes away can have its attractions and detractions for a child to go to the university. But we're delighted because we know Notre Dame very well. Um, and I will say that we got to know it a whole lot better as a parent. And that was um, really quite exciting and rewarding. Now, I mean, with your job with Church Communications, you interact with the university all the time, but you're not a graduate. No. So you didn't necessarily have an inside look, and now you do. So from your new perspective as a parent, what have you learned about Notre Dame that maybe you didn't know before? Well, I'd say a couple things. I think that the, the education and the environment, um, it's simultaneously more challenging than I thought. I mean, it's a, you, it's a working degree. The students really work hard. It's also a very nurturing place as well, and that's a very interesting combination. And I'd say the other thing that really struck me about Notre Dame, and I knew but didn't appreciate the extent, great education, you make wonderful lifelong friendships, but I think it's really the character that the students get from the place. It's, you know, our job as parents is to raise adults, not to raise children. And the things that they learn and the sense of stewardship and what you've been received and what you now need to give and how you need to be thinking about the world, it's, it's wonderful to see kind of those values instilled and enhanced in your children. You know, and, and it's interesting because the corporate philosophy of Shures Communications, and I see it firsthand here with your TV station, your newspaper, your radio stations, you're very involved in programs like that giving back uh, to the community. So I, I'm sure that that is a value that uh, you instilled in your daughter throughout her life. Does Notre Dame take that to another level though? I think they do. I think that, and thank you for saying that, I think what they do here is they expand the students' horizons. So you've come from an environment, now you're in a new environment, and you're gonna see needs in the community, but really what you're also gonna see is a global perspective and really how might you have a chance to have an impact on the world. And, and we know people in need in the United States, but the global need is so much greater and so much broader. And that's where I really think Notre Dame does a wonderful job of kind of enhancing the student's vision, as well as to not only the need, but as well as, okay, now I have these enhanced skills and I have these talents, what might I do to make a difference on a global basis? So it's, it's really, it's, it's terrific to watch. What year is your daughter? She's a senior, she'll graduate in three weeks. So I mean, the, the process is almost complete. Right. 
What tangible impact have you seen on her in terms of what the university has done in shaping her as a person? I think that um, for her, she's an English and a graphic design double major. So I think kind of where she went academically certainly came. The professors here are great, um, first name basis with a lot of the students, and, and they challenge and, and guide, um, as well as I think the circle of friends. Um, I think one of, my, one of the funny stories she told me was, was on this campus sometimes when people greet you, they'll say peace. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to think of, okay, now what other university or is that a normal greeting and how, how wonderful that is? And I think that's one of the things that makes this place unique. From your perspective, and again, as a young man and even growing up, it's a family business. Right. You were always exposed to Notre Dame. Absolutely. And in going to Notre Dame events, both athletic and otherwise, but how has having your daughter be a student at Notre Dame, how has that impacted you and your wife? Well, we've certainly grown more engaged with the university um, on an individual basis. Um, and, and I think that one of the things that's nice is the university provides opportunities for parents to engage. So your, your child comes here because it's their choice and their decision. Um, as parents, if you want to engage, you can as much as you like or not. But I, what I find interesting is, is here's a university, and I have no idea how old Junior, junior Parents Weekend is. I realized last year that we got a chance to get to know more of our daughter's friends. We also got to know their, their families. So now graduation will be that much more meaningful. And so it's interesting that the ethos of this place is very encouraging for parents to engage in a number of different ways. Now, I've been out of school now, college, for more than 30 years, but, but it seems things have changed. I, mean, I remember applying, and there was pressure, but it seems that there's even more pressure today, that it's this, this huge decision, and it's a huge financial commitment both for the student and the parents. Absolutely. So what would you have to say to potential Notre Dame parents as they are considering this decision, and, and possibly depending on how they handle it, whether they're right. leaving it up uh, to their son or daughter, if they're playing a role, but what would you say to parents who may be about to become Notre Dame parents? I would say that that um, our experience is uh, great education. And that's kind of foundational. There are lots of schools where you can get a great education. Um, but this really is a terrific education. Um, it's the peer group. I think it's the relationships with the faculty. Um, I think it's the um, having the uh, hall system and the living system and the rectors there uh, make this huge difference. Um, in the in the experience and the tenor and and real really what I'd say to the parents and to the the high school seniors thinking about this is is what is it that you want to get out of these four years of your life and then what do you want to get after this we haven't had the experience yet as Notre Dame alums but I know that is a very close-knit devoted group and my sense is that my daughter will find that she's tied to people for years and years, and that's one of the most that's one of the most rewarding parts of college is what you see afterwards. Todd, thanks so much for taking the time today. Jack, I appreciate it. Thank All you. All right. And our show does continue to roll on. It's time now to check in with our Notre Dame Day reporter, Alyssa Marino. Alyssa, it looks like you're in one of my favorite places on campus. <laughs> I am Jack. I'm here in Layton Hall, the beautiful DeBartolo Performing Arts Center, where I'm here with the world famous Notre Dame Glee Club, who, in fact, in 2015 are celebrating 100 years of existence. So, without further ado, let's hear from Notre Dame Glee Club, directed by Dan Stowe.
What a beautiful performance by the Notre Dame Glee Club. I'm going to send it back to you, Tricia, in the studio. Thank you so much, Alyssa. Listening to the Notre Dame Glee Club never gets old. Now let's take a look at a truly innovative enterprise that gives Notre Dame faculty the ability to take their great ideas and research to the next level. Please watch. The new Innovation Park facility isn't the largest building around Notre Dame, but what happens inside may have one of the largest impacts on the world. Inside these walls, many of the discoveries made at Notre Dame will move beyond the laboratories and take their first step toward entering the marketplace and eventually improving people's lives. Discoveries like solar energy cells, nanoscale logic devices, clean energy applications, and Professor Mark Sukow's emerging vaccine for cancer. There have been a lot of great ideas, uh, lots of exciting findings in science over the, well, over history, uh, let alone the last uh, 20 to 30 years, but many of those simply die at the bench because there, is, there does not exist that bridge uh, from bench science uh, to, to business uh, and then on to the clinic. Welcome to the bridge. Clients at Innovation Park may start off in the greenhouse for a short time while they determine if their business ideas are strong enough to evolve into startups. Virtually everything is movable here. Filing cabinets, desks, tables, lights, even the walls. Park president and CEO David Brenner has visited more than 20 other research parks and says the most successful ones offer the most flexibility for clients. The greenhouse may make the difference between a remarkable discovery becoming a well-known brand or fading into nothingness. The better mousetrap does not always have customers beating a path to their door. It's understanding how you take an idea to, to those customers, what those customers are looking for, so that you can amend your plan and make sure it happens. The best piece of advice I received was that uh, scientists are not businessmen and don't ever think you are a businessman. One of the first questions they ask is the most basic. How do I get this business off the ground? And so we've got a variety of market experts, both regionally and throughout the country, that have that, I've been there, I've started a business before, and these are the landmines and these are the things to focus on to really create the right value. Many of the market and industry experts are part of the Irish Angels Network, a group of Notre Dame alumni and friends experienced in entrepreneurship and supportive of new ventures. They can advise at every stage and even assist with securing funding. We certainly at Innovation Park are not in the business of writing checks, but we are in the business of preparing companies and then providing the introductions that can help them have the most uh, access that they need to be able to get the right level of funding support. So what will the future look like on the southeast edge of campus? What I expect to see over the next few years is probably a, a really large portfolio of new ideas from nanoelectronics to energy to aerospace to biotech. Very exciting times here at Notre Dame. Welcome back to Notre Dame Day and here in our studio with us is Dave Brenner, the Executive Director of Innovation Park. Welcome Dave. And you're not just an alum of the university, married to an alum. You had three children that went here. That's um, correct. When did they go here? Uh, David graduated in 05, uh, Marie in 08, and Cindy in 09. And you were telling me some of their impressive resumes now, where have they gone off to do? Well, we're very, they've done extremely well. My son now works at Google. Uh, his sister Marie is a doctor in Chicago and Cindy works for Deloitte at the World Bank. Now we were talking before Innovation Park, you have a lot of Notre Dame students that go over and intern and work for you guys. For fellow parents, is it a good thing, you know, to have your kid have that on their resume? Oh, it's tremendous to have it on the resume. We've been very fortunate over the past four years to have 150 student internships working with the companies, really getting to see what a startup does. Now just looking at your own kids and where they've ended up, would you say it's better to coming back here as an alum or coming back here as a Notre Dame parent? Uh, it's difficult to choose. I mean, it, as you do it, experiences are very different and you shouldn't compare. There's just so many different opportunities that were there when we were here and different opportunities for them now. I mean, you take freshman orientation and junior yeah. parents weekend, those weren't available to us and I think they're just tremendous resources and opportunities for parents and students. And clearly you've stuck around so you get the perks of being both from now on. Right, it's, uh, and it's a great place to be and uh, but as I say, the, you really see how this is, acts as a community and takes care of everyone. Well, thank you so much, David, for joining us. Thank this you. Is, um, please take a look at this video coming up about the Notre Dame Parents Program, just one of the truly great programs in this school. 
parents program, I was asked to do some side work um, with the development office. And basically the question that I was posed was how do we communicate to and what do we do for parents at the university? What I did was just bring all that information together and to say what do we send to parents, how do we communicate with parents, and then be able to kind of hand that off to Barbara to be able to say what do we want to do moving forward, um, to have a more intentional interaction and outreach with parents, realizing that they have, you know, they're already making a, a major commitment in trusting their son or daughter to us, um, but that they, you know, to have them be a part of our community in a special way, whether they're alums or whether they're not alums, to realize that they are truly part of the Notre Dame family. I just wanted to thank you for your great organization with the Parents Program, and it's made things just incredibly easier for us. Um, your calendar that you put together for the parents program is still in my refrigerator. It's been on there for three years and I updated it and it has all the numbers that I need and it just, it's those little things that make things so simple. This summer we got to work with you at the parent program, which I think we'll probably do forever. It was wonderful to give back and also to work with you, Barbara. And it was so nice to welcome the freshman parents. We had that wide-eyed look when we were moving Chris into his dorm, so it was nice to be able to help the parents. When my second child came here in the summer, we were in the parking lot and, you know, ready to, waiting for, to be, uh, have permission to come in and we unroll the window and they smile and welcome to Notre Dame and they have this great bag from the parents program of all the things you need, including bottled water, for that hot summer day and I just wanted to thank you because I, I can imagine how many hours it takes to take care of all of us um, and I do it with five kids so I can just imagine when you're doing the parents program um, the amount of hours and, and we sincerely appreciate it. When they say family when you get that acceptance letter and it says welcome home it really means welcome home and just because of some of the changes in our family over the last years that feeling of really being a part of a family and connected beyond your own individual family has been tremendously supportive and very comforting to all of us. And I can't say enough about how grateful I am for that, knowing that one day I won't be around for my kids, but the fact that they have this extended family that has embraced them and that will always be there for them and that they understand that as they move forward, they're gonna be a part of that for other people is, it means the world to me. And welcome back to the Notre Dame Day set where I am delighted to be joined by a marvelous lady, Barbara Kelly, the Associate Director of the Parents Program here at Notre Dame. Welcome. Thank you very much, Jack. Now, I just wrapped up my 32nd year here, and, and ever since I got here, one of the biggest weekends of the year has been Junior Parents Weekend, right. a long tradition at Notre Dame. So uh, I just talked with Todd Schurz, who was terrific in talking about the involvement of parents, but he thought the parents program had been going on forever, but that's no. not correct. No, that's not the case at all. The parents program is barely three years old. It'll be three wow. years old in June. Um, and the whole focus of the parents program is really to give an opportunity for our parents, both current parents like Todd and lifetime parents like Dave Brenner and myself, to stay informed with what's going on at the university and to become involved in the university. And so I've been very fortunate to help establish that program here at Notre Dame starting in June of 2011. Each month, our current parents receive a newsletter that tells them all about what's going on at Notre Dame. There is a parent's website, and for the past two years, we've had, very similar to this, a web-streamed, a live-streamed information program where parents can learn a little bit more about the programs that affect their student. Um, our lifetime parents receive a quarterly email, and then there's all kinds of involvement, engagement opportunities. Um, parents can become mentors. They can, uh, where they are able to answer questions from our current parents, what's it like to be at Notre Dame, what kind of travel arrangements do I make. They can become parent volunteers. Last orientation, I had 56 parents fly out, come out, travel from all over the country just to meet and greet and welcome our new parents to campus. So it's a wonderful opportunity for parents to stay involved. You know, it's always seemed to me, again, ever since I got here in 82, that parents were always a little bit more involved here than at many mm -hmm. other universities. Mm -hmm. I, I know when I went to school, they dropped you off as a freshman and picked you and came to graduation. Right. Uh, right. But with the 
already rather high level of involvement by parents. Mm -hmm. How did it come about that this need was identified here at Notre Dame, that they needed to take it another step? Exactly. And I think that we're a very fortunate generation where we've been with our students for 18 years. We've been their best advocate, their parent, their friend. And that doesn't end when they're in college. It doesn't end at the age of 18. And so the parents program here really provides an opportunity for them to continue to stay informed, to stay involved, to become a part of their student's life in a way that allows the student to flourish and to thrive, and as Todd, Todd pointed out, to be their own person, to make their own decisions, and yet the parent learns what's going on at Notre Dame and learns a little bit about how they can become involved. Okay, so you just explained how it benefits the student, mm -hmm. how it benefits the parents. Mm -hmm. How does this added involvement benefit Notre Dame? Well, it has been an incredibly wonderful collaboration of so many programs on campus that um, I've been able to, to pretty much, Parents Program has been able to wrap its arms around these other programs. And now there is a channel for all of this information to go through the Parents Program to parents. So I get calls every day, I get emails every day asking a question about this or a concern about that. And while I may, I may not have the answer to those questions, I certainly know where to find the answer for the parent. And so it's become a way for Notre Dame's programs to seek a channel, an outlet, to pass information on to parents and for parents to have a source where they can find that information. Now, you are not an alum, but you're more than just a director of the parents yeah. program. From your nifty pin, you yes. are, in fact, yes. a parent yourself. I so am. how did that perspective coming in to run this program, being a Notre Dame parent mm -hmm. yourself, how did that help you? Well, you know, what I saw, my husband was an alum. I have two children who graduated from Notre Dame and have always been a very, very proud parent. And so I think that's been my, my hallmark, my trademark, knowing that Notre Dame parents are very proud of their children. And yet we have the alums on this side of the glass door and we have the students on this side of the glass door and the parents stay on this side and they want to be there. They want to be a part of it. So it's really my goal and my hope that the parents program provides that opportunity for our parents. You began this interview with a litany of all the things you already do. So I don't want to put any pressure on you, but what are your future goals for this program? Okay, thank you for asking that, Jack, because I do. I have, a, I have quite a few. One of the things, the other opportunities for our parents to be involved is at the very local level, not just by coming to campus. And in May, since we celebrate and we honor Our Lady, what a beautiful idea to share our faith and to bring parents all across the country together. And so this year we have 12 masses which will honor and celebrate the mothers and women of Notre Dame. Last year we had 10, the year before we had six. One of my goals would be to have 100 masses to celebrate the mothers and women of Notre Dame, um, to bring in more volunteers on campus, and just to make this a, a continually open um, place for parents to feel welcome, because we are part of the Notre Dame family and Notre Dame lets us know that. Barbara, thank you so much You're for spending welcome. the time and good luck. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks, you. Jack. Now let's head outside Should to our reporter, Catherine Dudas, who, who is with this hour's Tug of War competitors. Catherine? Oh, oh. Jack, I'm standing here on North Quad for another round of Tug of War between O'Neill Hall and Keough Hall. <laughs> now, now each hall can have 18 players on their team, and to make it more interesting, they're competing for a total of a thousand dollars in cash prizes. Okay, are you guys ready? Let's go.
What's your name first? Brandon. And how does that feel? That feels awesome. Yeah. Well, what was the secret? Strength. The kangaroo. <laughs> okay, I definitely believe that. Awesome. All right, that's that's it for here on North Quad. We're going to send it back to you, Jack, for uh, number two of the competition. Back to you, Jack. Well, thank you, Catherine. And now we are going to continue the competition between O'Neill Hall and Keogh Hall with a different game. We have teams from O'Neill and Keogh in the studio right now for a slightly different feat of skill. It's a new app called Heads Up. Ellen DeGeneres made it popular on her show. Now, each residence hall has a two-person team. One of the team members will hold the app over their head, and the other will have to guess their clues so their teammate can guess the word on the screen. When you guess correctly, you can flip the app down, and when you get a new clue, you can also flip the app up to skip a word. So, who's first? Uh, my name is Kevin Frost, and I'm from O'Neill Hall. Right. Uh, Matt Boomer, I'm from O'Neill Hall. All right, guys, can you give your general introductions? What are your majors and such? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, I'm studying management consulting with a minor in philosophy, religion, and literature. Uh, I'm studying political science and history with a minor in business economics. All right, guys, well, you guys will have 60 seconds to play the game, so let's see how you guys do. All right, let's go. You ready, Boom? Okay, uh, Jesus is, who's on top of the dome? Virgin Mary. Yes. Uh, she's the fencer, uh, gold medal winner, brought the uh, flag Mary in. Mary Gunas. Yes. Uh, next to Walsh Hall, the men's dorm. Soren Call. Yes. Uh, the former dean of the business school. She's woman, skip. Uh, next to Baden and Lions. Howard. Storm. Yes. Uh, quarterback, 2006. Brady Quinn. Yes. Uh, the founder of the university? Uh, Father Storm. Yes. Uh, our sister dorm? McGlynn. Yes. Uh, the guy who does the corny jokes between the fourth quarter? Oh. Skip it, skip it, skip it. Skip it, flip it, flip it. Uh, hockey player, Flyers in the 70s. That was not the same Bobby Clark, but that's <laughs> fine. Um, <laughs> It was Sergeant Tim McCarthy. All right, well, yeah. congratulations, guys. We're tabulating your score right now. It looks like you guys got seven. Seven, right. All right, so now seven is the score to beat. Now we'll have the opposing the team come take a seat, and then we'll introduce you guys. Yes, he is. You want to come join us on the couch? Thank you. Thank you. Here, I can take this from you. So seven is the score to beat right now. Let's see if the new team can come in. Take over here, I'll give you this microphone. Can you give me your standard Notre Dame introduction? Sure, I'm Camden Hill. I am a sophomore from Keough Hall studying computer science. Yeah. I'm Joe Gimino. I am a junior from Keough Hall studying finance. All right, well you guys will have 60 seconds to play the game. Let's see if you can beat seven. Right. We'll see. Oh, he is on the Seahawks, he's a receiver. Uh, Golden Tate. Yes, good job, dude. <laughs> oh, this is where we live. Keo. Okay, great, easy. Uh, this is, it's like, it's right out here. It's the place, the, the statue thing, the big, the big uh, thing. Stonehenge? Yeah, okay. Uh, this is where Alumni Hall is, Dylan Hall. South, South. Quad. Yeah. Uh, she's a basketball player. Uh, she just got injured. Uh, Natalie Chanwa. Uh, this is our basketball coach, men's. Uh, Mike Ray. Uh, it's our football coach. Uh, <laughs> Brian Kelly. Yeah. Uh, this is next to South Dining Hall. It's a dorm. Uh, the guys. Guys dorm. Uh, Fisher? Regatta. Yes. Um, next. Just, just go. Next. Oh, this is where we play basketball sometimes on South Quad. Uh, books. Oh, uh, the rock. The rock. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Next. Oh, this is not South, but... North. What? No, oh, dining hall, dining hall. Oh, dining hall. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys, um, looks like Keel Hall is the winner. You guys got nine right what? in this wow. game. Awesome. 
So it looks like right now, did you guys win the tug of war? We won we tug of war, yes. Oh, so it looks like Keo Hall will be getting the big check for this game. He won both rounds of the competition. Congratulations <laughs> to both of you. Um, now we're going to send it back to Catherine, back in the telecast for this hour. We're going to check in with her right now. Thanks so much. I'm here with Mark and Jonathan, who are going to tell us a little bit what's going on in the social media world. What's going on, guys? Great. Thank you. Thank you to everybody out there for participating in Notre Dame Day, continuing to come to the website, check out our broadcast, and don't forget to give and vote. As a reminder, NotreDameDay.nd.edu is your URL. Check it out. Once you get there, look for the big green button. That's right. We've been telling you about the big green button all day. It's right there in front of you. Give and vote. I'll give you an opportunity to vote for your favorite areas of interest at the university here and give them a chance to win their percentage of the $250,000 in challenge funds that we have available them, to them today. So as we go into it, we're going to talk a little bit about social media here before we get to the leaderboards with my friend Dan Santucci. But first, I want to introduce you to someone. We've got Crick Cal from Albany, New York. She's a second-year MBA student. She's here helping us out in the social media center. For all of you out there that want to check it out, please feel free to come down, take a look. We've got some free food and drink for you. Now let's jump in real quick and see what's been happening this past hour. Notre Dame Architecture, they just had their featured hour not too long ago. They tweeted out they're currently ranked number five in academics. So they want to see if they can pass ND Science. That sounds like a challenge to me. So ND Science and ND Architecture, looks like they're getting into battle for the number four spot in the academic grid. Then we've got Jack Nolan. He's, he tweeted out some of the crack production staff for ND Day, many of whom have been on the job for 24 hours plus. So Jack's over there working hard for us. He's, he's the anchor right now. And absolutely, this production staff out here World class, they've been working hard, we've been working hard. All we're looking for from you is to push that big green button and get us your votes. Now we're gonna turn it over to Dan. Dan's gonna talk a little bit about what's been happening in the residence hall challenges and what's happening on the leaderboard. So Dan, tell me, what's going on, man? Thanks, Mark. Uh, I wanna say thank you to everyone participating in this big day. Still over six hours left to, to make your uh, donation and to vote. So please uh, participate. As we look at the leaderboard, I, mean, I want to say a big shout out to Lions Hall. Congratulations on the, the big win over Lewis. Um, in our current dorm matchup, we have O'Neal uh, with a slight lead over Keough. Now we take a look at the leaderboard. Our total gift count is at 20, over 2,200 and we're approaching $600,000. So thank you so much for that. Um, the law school, in, in the, on the academy side, the law school is up over 2% on the business school and making strides there. As we go down the student life, we can see that Keenan now is um, back in first place, but the juggernauts of Knott Hall are making a big push. So keep it going, boys. And when we go down to the bottom, the Challenge Fund leaderboard, big news. Keenan Hall has surpassed financial aid in the overall Challenge Fund. So way to go, Keenan. Um, and here we go as we close out the last six hours. I'm going to send it over to Catherine. Thanks so much. Okay, it's exciting stuff going on. We have Diane Parr Walker, the university librarian. We have a live visit with the ND Club of Puerto Rico. A live visit to the top of Hesburg Library. Oh no, what is happening? What do I do? <laughs> Corey Robinson, uh, Tori Hunter Jr., and Jesse Bon Jovi, and Pascarilla East Hall and Pascarilla West Hall. Okay, so. See you back here for more from Notre Dame Day live at the top of the next hour. <laughs> 